Concordia is a well-respected and well-loved game by those who know it, but is it as good as people say? And is the digital app worth it? We'll take a look at that today here on Legendary Tactics. I discovered this game originally through a friend of mine. He had purchased it at a board game cafe, apparently purely based on its reputation as far as I can recall. Whenever I would go over to visit, I would always request to play Concordia, and I was excited to show others this game as I found it to be an interesting puzzle. Not quite a deck builder, not quite a Euro, and not involving really any luck at all. When the pandemic hit, we obviously weren't able to get together, and so Concordia fell off my radar a bit. Not only because I don't have a copy of the game, but also I was lacking a group of people to play against, so it's been almost two years since I last played it. Now, I was excited to hear about the release of the digital implementation at last, which thereby allowed me to revisit this game again after a couple of years. So it's going to give me an opportunity for me to revisit my thoughts on the game, and I'd like to share them with you here, along with my impressions of the digital port. As is traditional with these kinds of reviews, we will look at what I like off the top. The game is balanced, perhaps ruthlessly so. Each game will be decided purely by the decisions that you and the other players make around the table. Other than the initial setup and how some of the cards come out, there's very little luck involved. This is sometimes a problem for some people, but in my experience, generally Euro players prefer this kind of pure optimization challenge. I lean more towards games that minimize luck, so this game scratches that itch well. I love the Tribune card. It's a simple thing, but I love the fact that you decide when to reset your deck and it's not forced upon you by a game mechanic. It requires you to balance your dwindling cards and opportunities with essentially skipping a turn in order to set up your play going forward. It's not dissimilar to Gloomhaven in that way, except for the fact that your play options expand with your empire as the game goes on. The Diplomat card also provides a simple, neat, and effective dimension to the strategy of how to play your deck. I like the scoring system, and I like how that factors into your card purchasing decisions. Do you take the cheap card that comes with a scoring metric that isn't going to benefit you much? Or do you overpay for a card that is of some benefit, but is going to give you the opportunity to score lots of victory points at the end? There's lots of wonderful decision making involved here. And what do I dislike? Well, the theme is not very strong. I don't demand a lot of theme for my games necessarily. I don't really dig games like Arkham Horror and Mansions of Madness, which are mainly story-based, though I respect their designs. I prefer strategy games, preferably with some historical basis, so you'd think that Concordia would be right up my alley. But even so, I have to admit that the theme is really pasted on here. It wouldn't take much to reskin this game for space, another time, or even an alternate history. This game is more about the balanced game system than about recreating history or telling any sort of story. The components of the cardboard version of the game are fine, but nothing spectacular. The layout and the map is well organized and well designed, but again, nothing really to write home about. And what of the digital port? How good is the implementation? Well, overall, I think it is a good app and they did a pretty good implementation of the game. However, this statement does come with some caveats. First of all, I wouldn't want to learn this game from the digital version and its accompanying tutorial. While the tutorial is adequate for someone familiar with the game already, for new players, I think they could have taken a bit more time to go over the game's concepts. The rules are not that complex, but it's the way things interact that is difficult to grasp. It almost feels like there are some concepts that were explained too quickly, or it's taken for granted that new players would grasp them based on a single line of text. Also, the tracks and status boxes are too small and you can't expand them by hovering the mouse or clicking on them. It's not bad once you figure out where everything is, but even as someone who has played Concordia multiple times before, it took me a little while to get used to that. Otherwise, as an app, it functions smoothly and quickly, meaning you don't have a lot of downtime while you wait for the AI to make their move. The controls are intuitive and work along the same lines as other digital versions of board games. It just feels very utilitarian, maybe like a German car without any of the optional upgrades. It's fine and it gets you to where you want to go, but there's not a lot of features to make it really fun. For example, there's not many animations beyond what is absolutely necessary. 
Like the analog version, the components are functional, but drab. It's unlikely people will be compelled by the look of the game to give it a try. So in conclusion, I like Concordia a fair bit. The game system really is well designed and implemented. It's never going to be the prettiest game on your shelf, as its looks are quite pedestrian. But give it a chance. I think if you like Euro games, you will find a lot to like here. Once you learn the game, the digital version is an adequate port that will allow you to practice and improve, maybe join some friends online and play more Concordia. I'm curious though, what do you think? While you're on your way down to the comments section to let me know your opinion, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps our channel. Thank you so much for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.